We are all eager to get out and eat. It's been a long and winding road navigating the pandemic, but as life starts to get back to a new normal, so are restaurants. I'm Rosanna Scotto, and this is Restaurants Across America, the road to restart. We are going to take you on a trip across the country. I always tell people that it's like the dinner party you wish you could have. From the East Coast to the West Coast to dining spots in between. How restaurants near and far are getting creative to lure you back in. Then, inside San Francisco's hard hit Chinatown. <laughs> A community struggling to come back from the pandemic, will it ever recover? Plus, your favorite foodies, dish all. Asian food means to America, and it means to me a non-political, a non-controversial way to share culture. Does this bring you back to the, the beginning? This is totally for me, at, at, you know, a back to the future, maybe. And we hear from Wolfgang Puck. Is he getting ready to hang up his apron? So where will the future of dining take us? And now we're in all 48 states. I'm not only reporting on this, but this is personal to me. This is my family's restaurant in Manhattan, and we've seen the heartaches, the hardship, and now the hope. We have a team of reporters from our Fox stations across the country with a nationwide effort to bring back the hospitality industry. We begin with an exclusive interview. Sean Kennedy, the head of the National Restaurant Association. And what you're about to hear may be hard to digest. It's a tough story. We are down from an employee perspective about 1.8 million workers. And we have a really uncertain future. Sean, how many jobs have we lost around the country from coast to coast? Economically, this industry has lost $280 billion in uh, revenue so far. And as, and as you well know, uh, we drive a lot of small businesses through restaurants. It's tradespeople, it's cleaning people, it's suppliers, everything that you need to run an operation. So when a restaurant shuts down or when a restaurant closes, it has an immediate impact on the local community. It really does. Sean Kennedy, thank you so much for talking with us from the National Restaurant Association. We appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Restaurants are the heart and soul of New York City. With me, Andrew Ritchie, who's the head of New York City Hospitality Alliance. So what do we know about the numbers here? How many restaurants are opening and how many have sadly closed during this pandemic? Well, unfortunately, according to some estimates, about 5,000 restaurants throughout the five boroughs have shuttered in New York City's restaurants and bars if we compare it to pre-pandemic employment levels. So it's really an industry that's been decimated. The good thing is, Restaurants are the heart and soul, part of the economic foundation and cultural fabric of New York City. So there's no doubt that we will come back eventually. It's all about how are we going to save as many of these beloved small businesses. What are the struggles like? What are the challenges right now for restaurants reopening? You know, rent has been extraordinarily difficult. We have very high commercial rents. These are small businesses. We also have very high labor costs. And because we laid so many people off because we got shut down, everyone's trying to hire people back at the same time. So staffing your restaurant has been really tough recently. Many people have left New York City. We don't know when they're coming back. If you rely on tourists, when are the nearly 70 million annual visitors returning to our city? So there's so many different factors, but at the end of the day, if New York City is gonna recover, we need our city's restaurants to be at the core of the recovery. Hi everybody, Mike Jarek here in Philadelphia, and just like all the other cities, Philly restaurants have been hit very hard. In fact, just in this center city section of Philadelphia, close to 100 restaurants have closed, and they are not coming back. The restaurants that have survived had to be very creative, basically moving their restaurants from indoors out into the street. For instance, Barbone. A vegetarian place looks like you've wandered into a French garden. Park. They built this structure along two sides of their restaurant. They call their structures the chalet. And then there is Rouge. We created this environment within this pandemic and allowed people still to feel safe. 
they put up a big tent and decided to create a theme in the street. One of my friends said to me, try something different. When wintertime came along, they created this ski lodge. It was a three hour wait every night, all through the winter. And now that spring is here, a spring garden motif. Talking with Maggie, our creative director, we kept on bouncing back and forth. Let's kind of create a garden, a hanging garden. And it all kind of came together as to what you see now. Rob Wasserman owns Root. To kind of like keep all my staff in place and not lose anyone and keep everybody's jobs going, it was huge. It was a big saver. Some restaurants defy the odds during the lockdown. Erin Cuomo is outside a longtime family-friendly DC favorite. Here at Philomena, located in the heart of Georgetown, known for their authentic Italian cuisine, they don't have the sidewalk or patio space to accommodate outdoor dining, so they had to move to curbside and delivery only. We didn't know how much of a followers and how many people really cared about Philomena were out there, and because of them, it helped us out staying afloat. Philomena is at the center of the DC culinary scene. This capital institution has been serving everyone, from presidents to dignitaries, for nearly four decades. Reagan and uh, Bush and Clinton, not too long ago, Joe Biden was here with his wife having dinner. But the pandemic changed everything. Philomena was established in 1983 for Joanna Philomena. She built this restaurant from scratch. She was always very involved and still is um, until today, even during the pandemic, which she has worked very hard to get us through this long road of recovery. The National Restaurant Association tells us since March of 2020, there have been 135 permanent closures in D.C. At Philomena, they've managed to weather the storm. Joanna Philomena and myself, we sat down, we went through every single item, we tested some items to see how they travel. We were just going to have to apologize that it wasn't available. In addition to the outpouring of community support, COVID-19 relief programs have been helpful as well. We had the help of the first PPP loan, which is great, it was awesome. And then we had the second one approved, and now we also have the SBA loan approved for the restaurants. As restaurants return to full capacity, the team here is looking forward to safe safely welcoming everyone back and adding even more memories to their wall. When Restaurants Across America continues, we head to San Francisco. Chinatown hit hard there. Still difficult, really difficult. Plus, these celebrity chefs are dishing out secrets. Maybe by the time he's 32, 33, he can take over and uh, sent me a check to south of France or to Austria or somewhere. <laughs> I come from the first Thai food family in America. And later, a look into the future. I always tell people that it's like the dinner party you wish you could have. When restaurants across America, the road to restart comes right back. Some restaurants are really struggling, whether it's Chinatown here in New York or Chinatown in San Francisco. As Amber Lee shows us, their story is emblematic of what's happening across America. In San Francisco, we take so much pride in how diverse we are uh, as a city. Community members are taking action to save the historic Far East Cafe, which opened in 1920 in the heart of San Francisco Chinatown. The pandemic nearly shuttered the business at the end of last year. Now it's fighting to survive by providing meals to low-income elders and families. The restaurant is giving and receiving relief through partnerships with the city and nonprofits. For the second chance, and uh, still difficult, really difficult. The restaurant is applying for legacy business status with the city, which could help make it eligible for additional funding. Over 100 years ago already. An effort is underway to restore the historical lanterns that adorn the dining area, ornate craftsmanship, telling ancient stories that illustrate the Chinese culture, with special attention to details, some depicting members of the military. Money is being raised to get the work done. These lanterns came from China. They were shipped here in crates. It was purchased by the original uh, owners and developers of this restaurant. Um, over 100 years ago. Doug May is a San Francisco firefighter who grew up in Chinatown. He volunteers his free time working to preserve Far East Cafe. 
May enlisted the help of other off-duty firefighters to paint the parklet after a contractor volunteered to build it with donated materials. Far East Cafe employs immigrants and has functioned as a banquet hall with the capacity to host almost 700 people for gatherings that span generations. Sandy and Carolyn Chu have been patrons for decades. Almost 37 years ago, they held their wedding banquet here for hundreds of guests. The reason why we chose this venue for our wedding banquet was mostly because of the decor. Chu has performed folk dances here for Lunar New Year celebrations in recent years. When we come to Banquet Hall, is where you find your history, you find your people. San Francisco Supervisor Connie Chan is working with the owner to consider landmarking the interior, the private booths, the artwork, and the design of the restaurant. It's really to preserve the history of Chinese American in San Francisco. Still, there is hope on the horizon that San Francisco is heading toward economic recovery. City officials say in March, they helped dozens of clients interested in starting new businesses. Reporting from San Francisco Chinatown, I'm Amber Lee. Still ahead, one-on-one -on -one with superstar celebrity chef Jet Tila. A lot of these crimes took place down the street for me. And the man behind the viral Instagram page, Fit Men Cook. You got some good Ooh. moves that I think you need to share. <laughs> This is Restaurants Across America, The Road to We Start. The pandemic made a lot of us reflect on life. And for one famous restaurateur, that means getting the next generation ready to take over his kitchen. Alex Michelson is in Los Angeles with Wolfgang Puck. Oh, we're gonna make our famous lobster here. Wolfgang Puck is in the kitchen of his newest restaurant, Mayor Wah in West Hollywood. Now pour a little wine in here. They glaze it with a little of our white wine. Right beside him, his 26-year-old son. This is our true family restaurant. Byron Lazaroff Puck is the general manager here. He looks like he's my supervisor here with the suit and everything. Like, it's impossible. Byron is really the first real family member who we are working together. So and for me, it's really exciting to see his passion. Wolfgang's mom, a professional chef, taught him at a young age to love food. Young Byron, likewise, grew up in his dad's kitchen. Cheers. See you. Their joint project, Mara, finally opened after nine years of planning. It's located at the brand new Pendry Hotel. It's a new addition to the iconic Sunset Strip, not far from where Wolfgang opened his first restaurant, Spago, four decades ago. Does this bring you back to the, the beginning? This is totally for me, a, a, you know, back to the future, maybe. I think that in uh, five, six years, maybe by the time he's 32, 33, he can take over and uh, send me a check to south of France or to Austria or somewhere. <laughs> what do you think is the most important lesson or piece of advice that he's given you in terms of restaurants? is to, uh, honestly, is to love what you do. I come in with a smile on my face every single day because this is really all I want to do with my life. To get that opportunity to make someone happy with a plate of food every day is really all I could ask for. One of my favorite celebrity chefs is Jet Tila. So nice to see you, my friend. How did yeah, you survive so during this crazy time? Uh, Ro, I gotta tell you, you know, um, all of our restaurants, of course, like everybody else, like you know, shut down immediately. We were down for about three months. So that's the restaurant side. We slowly have picked back up because we are fast, casual, focused. We have more than made up for the losses. We've got all our people working. That was our number one priority. Asian American restaurants have really gotten hit during this lockdown period. What are your thoughts on that? As you know, I come from the first Thai food family in America. So my journey as a chef was, was a, a mom and pop immigrant restaurant family. So I've lived that for the first 15 years of my life. So what do I, I know that they are all were all and continue to struggle um, with language barriers and the inability to negotiate really good pricing everywhere, even with food costs. You know, the bias crimes, the hate crimes that are going on there all over the country. Did you feel any of that or 
were you safe? You know, I have to be honest with you, Ro. I mean, I felt safe, but a lot of these crimes took place down the street from me, in, in pockets that were always considered safe, like San Francisco, New York City, and Los Angeles. So my gut reaction is to tell you I feel safe, but uh, I, I feel nervous. What does Asian food mean to America? Asian food means to America, and it means to me a non-political, non-controversial way to share culture. Well, I wish you the very best. Well, Thank you thanks, so Rose. much, really Jack. Great. It's always great to talk to you. Our next guest made the best during the pandemic on social media. It wasn't always easy, though. Please meet Kevin Curry, the guy behind Fit Men Cook. Welcome. How are you? What's up, Rosanna? How are you doing? Good. I'm just wondering, during this time where many of us packed on the pounds, how did you stay focused? Oh, goodness. Um, just a lot of things. I tried to keep myself occupied, um, really. Um, one thing that really helped me out was goal setting. So when I noticed myself, you know, kind of settling into to the whole quarantine and packing on like a few pounds, I said, all right, maybe, maybe Kevin, it's time to reset. So why don't you set a fitness goal for yourself? So I started to train for my first triathlon. Kevin, um, you've had quite the journey and ups and downs. Uh, you've had your bouts of depression. How did you get yeah. through that and get to this point where now you have over a million and a half followers on Instagram? What I've learned is that there's an incredible synergy with the food that we put into our body and the way that we feel. In fact, through my own research and, 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 and through doing this whole journey, I've learned that like the highest level of serotonin levels is actually in our stomach. It, it, it's in our gut. And so what we put into our body, it actually really does affect the way that we feel. So when I was at my lowest, Rosanna, I was started to um, pick myself up by learning how to cook for myself. So there was like two folds. One, it was just being able to take a recipe and cook it from start to finish. I felt a sense of accomplishment. I felt good about that. But then I also wanted to lose weight because I just wasn't feeling well. So that's when I learned that there's like a, uh, you know, like a great link between the food that we eat and, and how we feel. The other thing that I love, Kevin, is that you move when you cook. A little dance class yeah. here and there. You got some good Ooh. moves that I think you need to share. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin Curry from Dallas, right. Texas, Fit Men Cook. So nice to talk with you. Great talking to you. Next, ordering food in the Midwest when you live in the South? We somehow went from, you know, this very Chicago based company, and now we're in all 48 states. It's the future of dining. Nothing is off the table as restaurants try and stay alive. Sally Schultz is in Chicago where they're thinking outside the box with home delivery. For Chef Perry Hendricks, he was used to cooking for diners at Chicago's famed Avec restaurant. I always tell people that it's like the dinner party you wish you could have. But then he had to figure out how to box up their classic dishes. This is the paella dinner. And ship them across America for diners to eat at home. It's been an incredible opportunity really to sort of stretch our brains and figure out how to um, live outside of just these four walls of the restaurant. Our entire motivation was really around extending our beautiful food to our very, very loyal customer base. Karen Brown is CEO of One Off Hospitality, the company that runs Avec and several other Chicago restaurants. When the pandemic hit and restaurants closed, they realized takeout wouldn't cut it, so started delivering dinners first to the suburbs and then much, much farther. We somehow went from, you know, this very Chicago-based company and now we're in all 48 states. In one of their restaurants that didn't survive the pandemic, Blackbird, they get the food ready to go. They send it nationwide with Michigan, Florida, and California being the top states ordering a taste of Chicago. It is these people that are pretty far from us that want our food. Even with the return of indoor dining and increasing capacities, don't expect restaurants to go back to their old way of doing business. Once we've opened this door, I really, I don't see it closing and uh, you know, hopeful that we can really continue and, and hopefully grow the business. Thanks, Sally. I think we all learned we miss socializing. After all, dining out is like theater and the show must go on. I want to give a special thank you to our Fox stations across America that made this show possible. I'm Rosanna Scotto. 
thank you for watching.